The title of this talk is Meta-Analysis of Sienna Stochastic Actor-Oriented Model Estimates. This is not the most elegant title that you will come across, but I was trying to find a title that would strike the balance between accurately describing the talk and not being overly technical. Before I begin, I want to note that although this talk is focused on the application of a certain type of model to the estimates that are produced by the Sienna software, the logic behind this type of meta-analysis can also be applied to all sorts of different outcomes, including those that are produced by other social network analytic methods. So for those of you who do not use Sienna, I hope there is still some value in learning about this analytic technique. Since this talk is about applying meta-analysis to the estimates produced by Sienna, we should probably start by reviewing what Sienna is. Sienna stands for Simulation Investigation for Empirical Network Analysis, and it is an R software package developed by Tom Snyders and his colleagues. This software estimates stochastic actor-oriented models, and this methodological approach is useful for modeling change in social network panel data. There are other workshops that are specifically devoted to these models. So in this talk, I will just briefly review them so that we can understand the estimates to which we are going to apply our meta-analysis. Sienna uses observed change occurring in social network panel data to estimate a network function. Changes in network X are modeled by simulating network microsteps that reflect changes in whether two individuals or actors are connected by a tie, such as a friendship. The network function expresses the log odds of each actor's possible choices for tie changes given current model parameters and the network state. Sienna also offers the ability to simultaneously estimate a behavior function. Changes in behavioral outcome Z are modeled by simulating behavior microsteps that reflect changes in an actor's behavior. The behavioral function reflects the log odds of the potential behavior choices for an actor given current model parameters, the network state X, and the behavioral level. So for the network function, the beta coefficients are going to be the estimated statistical parameters that indicate the strength of the network effects, while the beta coefficients from the behavior function indicate the strength of the behavior effects. After you estimate a model with Sienna, these beta coefficients describe the average effects within the network, and they are what we usually report. So what if you have multiple networks? What are your options? Well, if the networks share some similarities and you don't want to report multiple beta coefficients for each parameter of interest, there are a few options for combining the estimates of the same parameter type. These include creating one large network, using the Sienna multigroup option, and conducting a meta-analysis. One option for combining the results from multiple networks is simply to create one large network. This option employs the use of structural zeros to indicate which actors are not able to have ties to each other because they're in separate networks. These structural zeros essentially demarcate the individual networks. Using this option is going to require that you construct data files for one large combined network, and this has the potential to be a pretty tedious task. Even if you put in the time and effort to create these files correctly, it doesn't seem like this approach offers much of an advantage over any of the other approaches, especially the multi-group option. So this option of creating one large network is generally discouraged. Another approach is to use the Sienna multigroup option. The Sienna multigroup option is going to consolidate the separate groups 
which are the networks, into a single object where each group is assumed to be unrelated during estimation. This approach assumes that all parameters, except for the basic rate parameters, are identical across groups. This option may produce smaller standard errors compared to estimating separate models for each network, but at the expense of using the same model specification and assuming the parameters have the same values. Now, there is an option to relax this assumption of identical parameters by allowing them to vary randomly between groups. But doing so uses likelihood-based computations instead of standard methods of moments approach, and this can lead to extremely long estimation times. The third option is to perform a meta-analysis on the results. A meta-analysis is a study of studies. And if you are familiar with this term, it's likely in the context of summarizing results from a series of related studies. In this case, our approach is going to be to estimate a separate stochastic actor-oriented model for each individual network, and then summarize the results for each parameter as though each network is its own study. So given these options, why should you consider using meta-analysis when you have multiple networks? Well, first, meta-analysis can be used to produce aggregate estimates. This is the main purpose behind the meta-analysis, but to be fair, the other options can accomplish this as well. Second, choosing to aggregate the network estimates using meta-analysis allows for more flexibility in the specification of the Siena stochastic actor-oriented models. Unlike some of the other methods, this approach does not require that the models all have the exact same specification. Next, the meta-analysis approach offers additional flexibility when it comes to incorporating study features that may not fit neatly into the other approaches. For example, the data that I work with contain many networks, but some of these networks come from different grade cohorts within the same school. Accounting for this additional type of dependence is straightforward in meta-analysis models, but could be more complicated to incorporate into other options. The fact that the meta-analysis option involves estimating a separate model for each individual network can be an advantage itself if the networks are large and the models are complex. When I estimate a relatively complex model on a relatively large network, I find that even using multiple processors on a supercomputer, it's not uncommon for it to take over 30 or 40 hours to obtain results from a single network. In this case, it's preferable not to try to obtain results from multiple networks at the same time. And finally, Meta-analysis allows for very straightforward post hoc analysis of network differences. And what I mean by this is that after obtaining estimates from multiple networks, if you have questions about whether there are patterns in differences in estimates between those networks, you can test for those differences relatively quickly without re-estimating the entire model. There are a number of different ways to formally conduct a meta-analysis, but one approach is to estimate a variance known multi-level or mixed effects model, and that's the approach that I'm going to describe. Just a quick note, I am going to introduce some statistical notation, but in general, I'm going to focus on the logic behind the approach, not the math. For those of you interested in reading more about the underlying statistical model, I would recommend starting with chapter seven in the Hierarchical Linear Models book by Roddenbush and Breich, titled Applications in Meta-Analysis and Other Cases Where Level One Variances Are Known. There are some differences in how variance known models are estimated, but I want to describe the logic in terms of multi-level modeling. 
it might be useful to briefly review what a two-level unconditional multi-level model looks like. Here, our outcome for individual i in unit j is predicted to be the mean of unit j plus the random error for that individual. So if we're talking about students nested in schools, the unconditional model can be interpreted as predicting each student's outcome by taking the grand mean of the entire student population, then adding a random effect to adjust for differences between the schools, and then finally adding the error that expresses the difference between the school mean and the student's actual outcome. We assume that our error terms in this model are normally distributed with means of zero and variances of tau and sigma squared, both of which are estimated from the data. When we look at an unconditional variance known model, we're going to notice some differences. There are some minor changes in notation as it is conventional to use D as the outcome and to use delta instead of beta in the level one model. You should also notice that we have dropped the sub I notation. If each I is an individual and each J is a network, we no longer have information on any of the individuals. So it's a two level model, but we don't actually have the data about the specific level one unit. If we're talking about applying this model as a way to aggregate Sienna estimates from multiple networks, then those estimates are going to be our outcome. I often find it easiest to estimate a separate variance known model for each parameter. In that case, the set of network estimates for that parameter become the outcome D with J referring to the network from which they came. Keep in mind that because the Sienna estimates, estimates apply to all the individuals in network J, we are not going to be able to introduce actor level covariates into these models. The lowest level of aggregation is the study level, which is the network level. So covariates need to be at that level or higher. But perhaps the biggest difference between the variance known model and the conventional model is the error terms. Our level one error no longer has an estimated variance of sigma squared. Instead of estimating this variance, we assume that we know what it is. And the values that we will use for these variances are simply the squared standard errors that accompany each of the estimates. In the unconditional model, the intercept is going to be our estimated mean. This is going to be the aggregate estimate that we typically report. In the conventional model that I showed before, this estimate was also the mean, and we saw that the observed estimates of schools and students varied around this mean. In this case, the intercept is our estimate of the true mean, and it is the observed estimates of the networks that vary around this mean. We are using the standard errors of the observed estimates as information about how precise each of these estimates is. This process will essentially weight the parameter estimates inversely to their standard errors so that the estimates with smaller standard errors count more and the estimates with larger standard errors count less. These models also provide additional information about the estimates themselves, including how much variance there is in the effect size estimates and the residual variance of the estimates. The variance known model I just showed was an unconditional model. So there were no covariates included in the model and it was just a two level model but it's straightforward to extend this model just as you would any other multi-level model. I mentioned earlier that the data I use come from a study where data were collected from grade cohorts within schools, and some of the grade cohorts come from the same school 
So I add an additional random error to account for that clustering within the study design. We can also add covariates to our model as long as they apply to the network or some larger aggregation if we have more than two levels. Remember, characteristics of the actors need to be included in the stochastic actor-oriented model itself, and you cannot introduce them as covariates in this stage. There are a number of software packages that allow for the estimation of variance known models. There is a function within the Sienna software itself, and both the HLM software and Stata allow for these models. I'm sure other software packages do as well. Since R is free, and you'll likely be using R for other purposes in this workshop, I'm going to go through some example script using the metaphor package. I'm going to walk through three exercises that I hope will illustrate how this model can be applied. Earlier, I mentioned that these models provide information about the variance associated with the estimates and with their residual variance. But for these examples, I'm going to focus on the aggregate estimate and the inclusion of network covariates. That concludes this portion of the lecture. I hope this was useful, and please feel free to reach out if you have any questions.